it's that time again masquerade far is it six today six cats running around my feet annoying me three roosters annoying me <laughs> it's very warm as usual but we're gonna try and get through this story episode as we left it Craig was in his room he'd just come back he just told Nit who was angry that he'd left her alone and then for him to announce that he just had the best sex of his life for the last two and a half hours with a lady boy Nit went berserk whether she fully understood him or not but she went for every object in the room and started throwing it at him she went for the TV luckily he grabbed the TV and stopped her she then broke down into tears um, Craig put his arm around her and she asked him why he didn't love her anymore Craig was in a confused state he was in a uh, a very nice place in his head uh, after his encounter with the lady boy he sort of knew at that point there was no future for him and Nid and he sat Nid down Nid, and said look this is just no good you and me you have a boyfriend you're happy I don't want to see you anymore with you and having another boyfriend if in the future you finish with a boyfriend then get in touch with me I want you to go back to Patea and I'll maybe send you an email in the future and I'll give you some money now to go and say goodbye as soon as he mentioned the word money her eyes lit up um, he went to his safe she'd already packed her bag he went to his safe and he pulled out 10,000 baht which was a lot of money he handed it to her and said look this is for everything we've been through this is enough for you to get back to Patea gives you a week's money and so you can move on oh, honestly and her eyes lit up 10,000 baht will you leave me alone I'm talking to the subscribers her eyes lit up 10,000 baht was a great amount of money evil Ron ow why you bite me all the time huh gee go away ow 10,000 baht lit a lot of money she understood what he said and she said are you sure and he said yeah he said there's no future for us he'd made his mind up and Craig was even though he was weak minded going with her in the beginning after he found out there was another guy involved he'd made his mind up gave her the money and said please go and maybe email me in the future and she she agreed she said okay she'd just been given a nice payday she picked a bag up she kissed him on the cheek and walked out the door as soon as she'd walked out the door a big relief came over him uh, uh, as if a big weight had been took off his shoulder he sat there maybe 20 minutes thinking what had happened and he picked himself up went and had a shower after the shower he put some clothes on he thought, I'm going to go and have a swim. Maybe the lady boys are there. He thought, well, actually, I'll go to her room and see if she wants to come and have a swim with me. So anyway, he puts his stuff in the safe, locks the room. He's got his shorts, t-shirt and a towel. Off he goes. Was it room 1270 or something? He went up in the lift, uh, down in the lift, walked around up to the new block, up in the lift, got to the room and the door was open and the cleaners were there. Um, it must have been after lunch 
but he, he just looks in the door and points to the cleaners and they say check out, check out. It dawned on him then that she she'd actually just checked out. And a panic came over him. Um, so he shot back downstairs, over to reception, had a good look around, she wasn't there. Oh, wasn't there and um, oh, pain on YouTube, cats climbing up your back. <laughs> he scoured around the reception, no sign of her. He went over, he plucked up the carriage, went over to the receptionist and asked if room 1270 had checked out and the receptionist ah, ah. The receptionist ah, the claws in my back said I'm sorry they, they've gone he said I uh, as a friend of mine did they leave a phone number or forward an address and she I'm sorry I can't give you this information but she did look oh, and no phone number no address and she went what could he do apart from pick five cats up and throw them <laughs> she'd gone not left a phone number he didn't get her phone number he hadn't got any contact details at all he sort of he was sort of relieved in a way and um, maybe not he headed up to the swimming pool, got the swimming pool empty, nobody there apart from the two guys with the towels and uh, he'd already brought his towel down. He ordered a beer, went and sat down in the shade on the chair that she was sat in before. Um, and he just sat there contemplating life and he seemed to be in a happy place. Now at this point I've got to point out, I met Craig about three times. Um, and when he, I think it was the second time he, he told me the story, everything. I don't know much about lady boys, um, toys. I don't really understand um, the process they go through, what makes them change from a man to a woman, whether they're transgender, um, whether they're a woman trapped in a men's body. I don't know, I don't understand. But I live and let live. And I never judge someone until I've met them. And I've met a few lady boys over the years and most of them have been brilliant. I, I asked him, I was nosy. We, we were getting on quite well, chatting quite a bit. And I actually said to him, I said, Craig, being nosy, I said, you know, can I ask you some personal questions about this because I don't understand. And he, he agreed and he was fine and I said to him, are you, are you gay? And he said, no, I, I have no tendencies, no attraction towards men. He said, I'm, I'm not gay, I'm not bisexual. And I said, but you went with a lady boy. And he said, well, yeah, the lady boy still had male organs. He said, but it was so different from anything I'd experienced in my life. He said, I love women, I love the female body. He said, but this ladyboy experience was, was better than anything. Maybe it's because the ladyboy was um, experienced, I don't know. And any second you hear a thud as Tigger falls off the top of my hammock. And he's not experienced um, any tendency tendencies for you know attraction to other men or anything like that before um, he'd never experienced anything like that and he said no I'm not gay he said I, I love women I love the female body and and a few people I've met who've been with lady boys not gay um, just Love the experience. I, I don't fully understand it, but again, I don't. I you know I live and let live, and I'm I'm not one to judge people, and I don't personally care about religion or sexuality of people um, at all. So, and he was open-minded. I said, well, it's amazing, really. I said, I don't. I'm not going to ask him about um, 
the ins and outs of the aerobics he had, but yeah, he seemed a complete straight guy. Yeah. Anyway, he's by the pool, contemplating. He realises straight away that this girl has gone, this ladyboy's gone, and um, that he probably will never see her again. He starts analysing what he's just done and been through, and it's gone, um, and he's glad. Uh, he fell for her, she had another guy, all that hassle. But it's brought him to the place now where he thinks, I want to actually explore the ladyboy scene. Okay, he's in Bangkok, he's got, what, a week? Was it a week left thereabouts? What a place to be, I mean, Bangkok, there's a lot of places where you can find ladyboys, so. He's been, what, seven or eight times to Thailand? He's, he doesn't really know anything about ladyboys, but he's about to find out, I suppose. He has a few beers by the pool, has a swim, and uh, just chills. He starts thinking to himself, tonight I'm going to go and try and find some ladyboy bars, ladyboy go-go bars, shows, whatever. And I'm not necessarily going to go with a ladyboy, but he's going to explore. Possibilities. Just for you cat lovers, so you people can actually see what it's like to try and film a episode of any video anywhere around the house. I just keep getting attacked by the evil Ron. They just won't leave me alone. I love them to death. So annoying. And yes, I've got a scratch on my head from yesterday where one of these cats climbed up the hammock behind me and then jumped on my head with the claws open and scratched me. Craig later back to his room, showered again, changed, went off to get some food. Um, he knew about the entertainment zones in Bangkok but hadn't really explored them. He knew Nana Plaza, there was definitely ladyboys bars and go-go bars there with ladyboys. He knew about Soy Cowboy but didn't know if there was any ladyboys there. But someone had told him um, about Kat Pong over Salon Way night market bars a lot of lady boys um, so that was going to be on his path tonight definitely he went outside and uh, hailed a taxi taxi driver pulled up and he just said Nana. Down the road to Nana, it's only about 80 baht, 100 baht, five minutes. Um, he got, got out of Nana, paid the taxi driver and he walked down Soy 4 and uh, he went to a place that I used to go quite a bit on the right hand side. So down Nana on the left, Nana Hotel on the right, 100 yards down on the right. Behind a wall, garden wall was a restaurant bar called the bus stop two floors and you can go upstairs and eat or downstairs quite nice food he went in there had some food on his own lovely waitresses very chatty a um, few foreigners sat around quite a few working foreigners go there quite popular with the teachers had a meal sat there thinking I'm going to go into Nana and it's early it's only about seven o'clock in the evening but Nana's open walks across through the famous little path going into Nana 
and he went up a foot to the first floor walked around there's go-go's around um, and he all they were all girls pretty much sat outside the along the balcony putting their makeup on didn't spot any lady boys went up the next steps um, to the third floor which is where I think there's three ground first and second top floor and top floor uh, walks along and in the corner was a bar at the back right hand side lady boy sat outside so he thought hmm and as he headed for the door a couple of the lady boys grabbed his arm and walked him in sure enough it was pretty much a lady boy buy they all looked like lady boys in there but it was really early the music was on there was a DJ um, bouncing up and down in the little jukebox it was pretty much an average stage set up and anyway he went and sat on the side away from the stage grabbed a seat these two lady boys sat with him and he said I'm just gonna have a drink and look around for a while is this okay yeah and he ordered himself a drink didn't buy them lady drinks lady boy drinks hmm lady drinks anyway he didn't buy any drinks at that point and he sat there for an hour a couple of drinks watching the various lady boys dancing on stage and quite often a lot of them had bikinis on um, some had one piece like swimming costumes on but they all were clothed in that go-go bar and he found himself trying to work out if they'd had an operation or not and whether the top half was real but he really was enjoying himself currently watching Ron walk across the garden towards the three roosters and he's thinking that's KFC <laughs> he, he really enjoyed himself and thought well, there's not much here at Nana there's too many foreigners around he got his bill paid his bill and left and he's thinking there's just too many foreigners around he knew Soy Cowboy was up the road, but it's quite a way up the road. But that was a really nice walk along Sucum Bit up to Soy Cowboy. And there were some bars along there that could be Ladyboy bars. He thought, I'm going to take that walk. He was in no rush, he could be out all night long, it didn't matter. And he did, he started walking up uh, the main Sucum Bit road from Soy 4. Soy Cowboy is between Soy 21 and 23. Um, it's a connecting road on the left hand side so he's walking up all the way along and he's crossed the road so he's on the left hand side of Sucumbi going up towards Cowboy <laughs> and uh, there's all the street vendors selling shirts and knives and pots and leather goods it's just it's a great road to walk up at night there's a lot of freelancer girls and lady boys on that road walking along and halfway along, Therme, very famous bar in the old days, very famous. He'd heard about that bar, but he'd heard that it was just a strange people went in that bar. He didn't go in. He saw it, looked down, he's down the steps, and he, but he noted it. He carried on walking, and uh, Lady Boy approached him on the road very very tall not that attractive and said hi oh, thank you Ron anyway we'll leave it there bit of an animal interaction today on this love story lady boys exploring lady boys to look at Craig you would never think that he would be interacting with lady boys or trying to or possibly going to he was a lorry driver from Ireland tough looking guy hmm as always put some comments below I'll see you on the next episode bye for now <laughs>